Hello. Thanks for dropping in. Um, I know I did a video that said that I was back, but I really haven't done much since then. Um, these are scary times. Uh, yes, I have not been afflicted. I don't know anybody who has gotten terribly sick from this virus. But these are scary times. Now, as I'm home alone, I'm going to do something that I wouldn't do if I was out in public. I've been wearing masks and mostly bandana things for, oh, I don't know, since March or April, whenever I go out of the house. But you know what, not when I'm driving alone in the car. Uh, but I always have them handy because uh, even though some people, some places, don't believe in all of this, um, it's funny, I think back to our story, and my grandmother didn't tell bunches of stories about the pandemic of the 1918-1919 period, but she was alive then because she was born in 1902. But she did tell one story, and I'd forgotten this, my brother reminded me of this. And that is, if you were going down the street and you saw a house that had all black curtains, that meant that everybody in the house had died from the pandemic back then. Thankfully, I have not seen any houses or heard of any houses around that have such black curtains. Although, from the stories I've seen on the news, there's a lot of families that have lost a lot of people, and extended families. Anyway, in the midst of all this, I have had a lot of things going on, and it has been a difficult time. And this space has become a disaster. Wouldn't you know it, this thing is stuck. It's supposed to say something inspiring. Here, as I sort through things here, the assumptions of people who think that this is all a hoax are wrong. But hopefully vaccines will come and the virus will go. So what I'm doing here today is looking through, have you had to use a bunch of that lately? Um, looking through to see what is what. Here, of course, is a cat brush. My son has discovered this stuff online called ASMR, where these people whisper and make funny noises. This might be a good candidate. This is, of course, I thought maybe Penny or Sheldon would appear, but it seems not. But this is something I need, but not here. I have so much that I need, <sighs> that not here. Indeed. I am Tom Cruise in Top Gun. I will fire when I'm damn ready to fire. Anyway, there are many, many things here, including, oh, lucky. This is one of my decorated Santa hats 
I think what I need to do with this one, as I did with another I had that was getting kind of ugly, is I think I need to take its accessories off and wash it and let it dry thoroughly and then re-accessorize. But you know, here's a funny thing, and I don't know why this is. <coughs> I have some hats. I have them with buttons. I have these ones with, these are basically, they were orphan earrings that I thought were kind of festive, mostly red, mostly green, mostly shiny, dangly and stuff. And I put them on here. But for some reason, it seems not many other people are doing this. I'm not sure why. Um, as they say, accessories make the man. Well, there are times when accessories yeah, there's the back, help when everyone's wearing Santa hats, as will be, although it may be that not many people are out, it's not bad to be a little different. So if you're out at Value Village or some other thrift store, or you go through your wife's uh, or girlfriend's or mother's or somebody's thing and find or ask for earrings for which there is no match. I'd love to see the results. Somewhere I have another one of these. Somewhere. Anyway, this one actually I'm feeling. I think my hair is getting a little long. Um, it's feeling a little snug. And I think I will. Oh. Of course, make sure that you don't have things that will stick into your head. <coughs> so we will return to autism awareness. Oh, look. Little Oreos for what we call in Canada the green bin. That is where we try to keep things out of landfill. And most everything that's edible is somehow compostable. So they've been around a while. So in they go. Oh, look, it's another hat. I really never watched this show, Duck Dynasty, but I did appreciate the beards. I did. Oh. Now, I reach up here, I think that's been, so this is, um, this is an article from Toronto Star, February 17th, oh, 2008, and that would be me, with shorter hair and a beard. This is about, as I say, keeping tabs on kids in the hall. Because for many, many years, I have worked in education. And what do I do? Well, that's a fine question. Um, I watch over, as they say, the kids in the hall. And, of course, a lot of times, they're not supposed to be in the hall. Um, but in my own way, I work with them, not against them to help the young people of today find their way so they will be good citizens for tomorrow. What does that mean? I don't know. It's a funny thing. Every day when I go into my school, I quite literally have nothing to do. But very soon, I am very, very busy doing it, whatever that is. Um, uh, you know what, it would be a good thing sometime for somebody to follow me around with a camera and see just the little things. Um, it might be helping someone with a locker. Um, I was thinking the other day there was a time I was wandering down a hall and there was a student there and they were outside their bathroom and they didn't want to go in. So I just talked to them and they, they just hated the thought of everybody looking at them when they went in the door. So they had some Oh, I suppose anxiety and stuff. So, so, anyway, so here they are, basically paralyzed. One corner. I said, look, if it's okay, I'll get you in. And they can all look at me. They don't have to look at you. And 
so they reluctantly, but um, I don't know what the word would be. Well, I mean, they wanted to go in. Anyway, so they did agree. So I opened the door and just waved at the teacher and, and kind of walked up to the front and just said, sorry, you know, whatever. Meanwhile, the student just slipped off to their desk. And there was a quiz or a test going on. And, but I could tell that there was still anxiety going on. So I brought them some water. And just to make sure that they were okay. And, and the classes were long, 75 minutes. Um, twice more, maybe three times, I brought them some water. And they got through it, and it was fine. And, uh, you know, just one of those moments of being kind and caring. Can you imagine? And I think, I think they did all right on the test, I think. Anyway, so there are, I have a million, maybe not a million stories, but lots of stories. Maybe I should start telling the stories. I don't know. Anyway, this I will, I found, and I've had hanging up here. Maybe, uh, somewhere I probably have one otherwise. Um, somewhere. But maybe before this one gets... Uh, damaged. I should see about getting it in a frame somewhere. So I'll put that over here and see what what. Oh, this desk is so full. Let's see here. Ooh. Here's a lamp with a little. There we go. With a little clip. And no bulb. Well, I have bulbs. And this thing just spins. These are very handy. You know, I've been on some TV shows, and it's funny, you don't know how many places, oh, that's really tight. How many places on a set in a TV show that they have lights that you have no idea that are there. And, you know, the desk lamp is not what's really lighting the room. Um, they've got Thing. And basically anything they can do that's out of frame, they will do. So oftentimes around corners, you will find lights um, sticking out. Just you can't see them. They may be very subtle and they may be very dim, but they are adding. That is what the director of photography looks over. And every time they move a shot, it's a big deal to get the lighting just right. So if you're into photography or anything. Remember, lighting is important, especially with people. Like many times, when I've been filming here, I don't have anything. Like right now, I have lights up above me, um, but that's it. But sometimes this light is over there, pointing over here. Other times I've had it hiding behind a monitor, pointing, you know, here so I'm lit better. Um, anyway, lighting. Lighting, lighting is important. This one, um, I'm not going to hook up now. I'll just sit here with the hat. Anyway, what I really want to do is get back to these hard drives. Now, of course, the festive season is coming. I don't really have any festiveness right here. Except for this wee little tree. And inside this wee little tree, open it the right way, is a music box and a little train going around a tree. Papers. I will put papers with papers as I short. Now here is something I should have looked at long ago. This, of course, Commodore 64. As you know, I have some. So, a while ago I met up with a very nice fellow. And we have been in touch, not much lately, but I've really not been on the air and not been very active. But um, he took it upon himself, he took this, this was mine, he was doing one for himself, to put in as many, uh, I think they're called zip sockets, so that it's easier to test chips. And like I 
you know, prying chips in and out can be dangerous at times. So I'm not going to open this right now. Oh, I could. If I had a screwdriver. Do I have a screwdriver? I have a screwdriver. That's another thing. I've got to uh, get my tools figured. Because the other day I had to go and try and get out a thing from a car. And I needed a 10 millimeter. There's the screw. Oop, 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 get out the sleeve. And 10 min 10 millimeter socket and just a little extender. I, uh, I couldn't find the extension. So here, ooh, now yeah, I'll just disconnect the keyboard. Just the LED for a second. So this is Rudy's magical work. Ooh. So I hope you can see that. But basically, anywhere there's a green socket, like for example on this ramp chip and on the 6510, no, 6526, 6510 video chip. To test the chip, now you have a little lever, you lift the lever, you pull out the chip. It's magic. Want to test another chip? You put it in, you slide it. Now, I know, I think, he had hoped to be able to do everything, um, but there are, these sockets are kind of big. They are bigger than just putting a socket in, and there were conflicts in space. So, oh, also, there were conflicts with some of the little components. So some of those same little components, capacitors and other things, had to be moved to the back side of the board to allow the sockets to do their magic. So I have not checked this. I know it will be perfect, of course, and I know it will make testing, especially RAM chips. Ooh, looky. RAM chips. A lot easier because, you know, every time... I mean, I'm pretty good with a screwdriver. I don't really like the chip pullers. I find it... I just get too much like uh, I'm like okay okay I got it I got it and then it goes frying and then I either drop the chip drop the thing bend a pin snap a pin do something so I'm quite comfortable with a little wee screwdriver gently 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 but this should make this easier so watch for an episode where I discuss this who knows maybe and Rudy and I have discussed this maybe Rudy will come and be a guest or I will go to his place and we'll film there. So I'm going to put this back together. As I can. Okay. And actually, maybe the first thing I do, which actually involves a computer, oops, I will look at this. And I can test some chips. I have lots of chips. I do. All right. So, anyway, back to my 10 millimeter thing. I got so frustrated, I just, uh, I was just worried. Anyway, so I do have to sort out many things, including my tools. I do. But what I really want to get back to, besides of course, looking at this wonderful machine, is tinker on the, the disk drives here. That's still been something that I'm wondering about now. Put it down. It's a little microphone. Hmm. Interesting. So this See, this, this table has really become a dumping ground. So this is a little wee microphone. I'm not going to test it now by sticking it in there. Um, and it looks like it also has a thing that you could still have something else in here. I think what I'm going to do, because I think it would be handy. Oh, wait, look. See, this is the kind of stuff. Things happen. This is an old... Phone. It's a line, one that a lineman would have carried on his belt, and then they would have climbed up a pole or something, 
and clipped onto various things to be able to test things with the phone system. Um, somewhere I have an older one. Anyway, hang on here. Another great piece of history. Maybe they still use them. I don't know. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do with this little wee microphone, because I think it might be handy, should I use my DSLR to film, as I have done in the past, mostly when shooting the screens, but also I know that sound, sound is an issue. It always is. So I'm going to tuck it in my DSLR bag. Not that the camera is actually in that bag at the moment, but you know. So here we have an assortment of things, including, but not limited to, my Harry Potter glasses. Which actually, from what I can tell, besides the fact that they're a little dirty, do nothing. Or they don't have any, I guess, the lenses are neutral. They're not for reading, they're not for distance, they're just, so I guess, just costumey. And the lenses are still a little, well, let me think about that. Eh, maybe they're a little bit for distance. I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, I have screwdrivers. That. These would be helpful. And these ones probably not so at this juncture in this place at this time. This one, well, it could. It's a little flathead with screwdriver that would be good for possibly pulling chips out. Now here is a relic to be sure, and I will clean this up a bit, but you know, I remember hearing from a fellow who worked at Commodore, David Berezowski, you could always tell when the company was doing well because all kinds of things would appear. And this is one of those things, and it is indeed a wee tiny screwdriver like a keychain thing that you could keep on your keychain in case, of course, you need to open a Commodore 64. It had a double-ended bit, um, slot head on one, Phillips on the other. And this is a little dirty and worn because I used to actually wear it and use it. But I will keep that one handy. I will. But a lot of these one twists and stuff. I will end up putting in my toolbox. There is a rusty relic. I can't see who made it. This, of course, these little pliers are handy, so I'll keep them on this. I also seem in my toolbox seem to have an awful lot of little bits, and that's not necessarily bad. This one also, this is a little cutter. I think I will put that in the toolbox. And a little V ring. I think I found. Ooh, that is a teeny, tiny, 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 tiny. Phillips screwdriver. I think I'll keep that around. This is a, con a cover for a controller for a Wii. Now, do I have a Wii? Yes, somewhere. I do. So I'll put that up there. I'm going to, I think, essentially start a miscellaneous box. I shall. This sweater, I like it. It's warm. But boy, if there's anything around, it picks it up. Here, here's a pin. Harley Davidson Motor Car. It's a, it's a, doesn't have an eagle or anything on it. Uh, but I do collect pins. I have lots. Here's one. 
I remember I got this at a store called Torrid. It's really fashionable. And it's a skull. And you know, bikers like skulls. So I'm going to put that on something. I have a whole vest of pins. This might have come off of it. I'm just going to set that there. And I'll look and see what I can see. Oh, I don't know about you, but you know what? No matter how many sets of nail clippers I have, when I need them, I can't find them. So, I'm going to put those with the pins. Let's see what's what. And here is a cute pendant with a multicolored stone that has been, I guess, polished, etc. That too can go with the pins. Ah, oh, here's a valuable thing. <coughs> it's my Sony camera battery and charger. I know it is charged at the moment. As I told you before, sometimes I do film with my DSLR. One thing I don't like about it, it'll only do a clip of maybe um, just about 20 minutes and then it stops and it doesn't continue. So you can be thinking that you're doing something when you're not. But now that I have this here, unfortunately I don't see the lens cap, but maybe, maybe it's in my DSLR bag. Maybe. But one thing for sure, in a moment, I don't see it there, but in the top of this I have a perfect spot to tuck this in where it will be safe. there then I know where it is. Oh look, here's more little Phillips head things. Oh, they look kind of big. Oh, now there's an accessory everybody needs. I don't know if this will still fit. There. I, I probably have not had this on many years. I've never, I found it in a drawer <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, I should. Uh. Well, at the time I was just, everything I was doing, I was just chucking over here onto the dumping ground. Oh, here's something that my mother brought by. I haven't used it yet. But still, I, I have this aversion to just taping things to walls because it messes with paint. But it is rather timely it is for masks and everybody should wear a mask hopefully and if you, if you really if you can't wear a mask go to your doctor get a note and you know we'll get through this just oh, we'll get through this now here's something I have no clue why this is right here it's a vintage hammer too. This too does not really need to be around delicate things like televisions and lava lamps and computers. So it too will go into one of my toolboxes. Oh look, more nail clippers of a smaller variety. Hmm. And here are little plates. I will tuck those aside somewhere. These can be handy if you're taking something apart and you just want to put everything on there. Make sure you don't lose something. But really, they don't need to be there. Oh golly. More paper, paper, paper. It is an endless stream. Oh, 
hear something. Uh, now it's not happening yet, but one day again, the Blue Jays will play. I know it was a strange season. I'll just put that over there with the paper. Um, oh, okay. Uh, look at that. Another one. Are they the same? Yeah, they look to be the same. Um, another thing that's happening is oh, it's the free agent season in the baseball world, but there's not a whole lot going on because things are rather up in the air. They are. And who knows what's happening next? Oh, I like these little lights. And I think I will keep that with my current. Oh, oh, here's something else, of course, I should do. The charger for my camera should be in the bag. It should be. These, these are very handy when doing keyboard things. I've been using a lot of them. Not recently, but I have. That will go in the toolbox. Oh, look. It's another handy dandy flashlight, but no batteries. Maybe that one can go in the toolbox. Ugh. Now these Harry Potter glasses are more of an accessory. I'll put them in the pins. And these, yes, these are actually, they're not incredibly magnified, but they are for reading. And they are good. So I will keep them close at hand with tools, etc. Here's a Sharpie. Always a good thing to have around. Oh, this is like a funky little necklace, but I know where that should go. But not right here. And here, oh, uh, yes. Here's a button from... A while back, not that long ago in Ontario's history, it is Kathleen Wynne for when she was running for Premier, and she did win at being Premier. And it's funny, I've known her a long, long time, because you know I work in a high school, and she was a parent of people in a high school that I was at, and she was on the school council, and then she became a trustee, and then she became an MPP in Ontario, and then she became Premier. And we, 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 we kept in touch, we did. Um, it is unfortunate that, see, many years ago, when it comes to electricity, um, the pre, long ago, back in the 90s, 90s? Yeah, 90s, the premier of the time, Mike Harris, wanted to sell off Ontario Hydro and make it a for-profit thing to whoever bought it and such. And it was not a good idea, and actually the courts stopped him. Well, and I believe this was her downfall, Kathleen Wynne came in. And of course, you know, governments need money to, for programs, for all kinds of things. But anyway, she came up with a different plan to sell off part of it. Um, and still, I mean, it was a better way of doing a bad thing if that makes any sense. So I wish she had not done it because I believe that led to her downfall. But, you know, she thought it was the right thing to do. But it wasn't. So, uh, here, oh, here we have some little bits. They are T10s, and if I remember rightly, T10 is the size. Oh, that's, not that can go in the toolbox. T tens are the size that are needed to open. There's a T ten, a Commodore sixty four. They are. So I think what I will do now. I have made a little bit of progress on this desk, but not much yet. 
Oh my. Yeah, these need to stay in here. These, especially these, these are heavy duty magnification glasses. And not that my eyes are terrible, but like right there, as far as that is away from my face, that is the focal point. If I go any farther or any closer, then I can't see boy. I can see every tiny little hair. So for looking at traces on boards and things, these are wonderful. There are other glasses in here. I need to keep these with my handy stuff because I have varying strengths of glasses in there. Uh, now, talk about oh, what's this? Another oh, a T20. Okay, that can go. Yes. Here, when we talk about masks, this is not the kind of mask that will help you in this current situation. But on occasion, see, I don't know how many of you people might have sleep apnea, but I do. And I sleep very well at night. But on occasion, if I'm in a place where it's light or it's bright or whatever, um, as long as I can get this very high up and my mask can still fit on here, it can be quite helpful. So I think I will take that upstairs and put it in my bag of tricks when it comes to sleep apnea issues. Anyway, much more to do here. Oh, look. This is a charging cord up with the old style of iPhone thing, which of course if you have an old iPad or an old iPhone is necessary. More and more these are harder to get. So one day I was in a Dollarama and they were selling these off for a dollar each and because I have a couple of iPads that in terms of being modern they're not, but they're still things that they're handy for. So I snagged a couple of these to uh, make sure that I could always keep charging because of course as you know Charging cords die. They do. Alright, I'm just looking around. Oh, another screwdriver, which will be handy. Oh, I think this, I'll keep this handy. This is a ratchet one. And I believe it has a T10 in it. Always oh, good to have. Another handy screwdriver. And here is a Sharpie. And does it work? It does. Sharpies are good to have handy. So I am sorting to try and find things that are good to have here. Meanwhile, getting rid of things that don't need to be here. A ruler of dubious origin. Well, I think I know where that should go, but that's need to be here. Anyway. Oh, it is endless. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. There's a cute little screwdriver. That's handy. There's a bigger one. That can go in the toolbox. Another thing I will do while I'm here. that works, I imagine. Um, I have thrown other charging cords of various sorts just up here because I find them. Watch this magic trick. If it works, it doesn't work. What's going on here? Oh, there. This one compresses down and it would be for a modern iPhone and then it gets along. Now, does this work? I don't know. That's why it's here to test it out. Do I think it works? I don't know. I have no clue. But I will test it. I will. So what is this? Oh, this is a good time to stop. This is a picture of my little Andrew. Some years ago, when we were getting ready to blow bubbles, and I was shooting lots of pictures then, 
and I had this button made. Uh, yes, that will stay handy in there here. It will. And perhaps, so everything is good to end on. I suppose this is not bad, although it really does. It only fits my pinky down to there. It's a piece ring. Piece. Maybe I'll put that with the pins and other such trinkets. I shall. Anyway, I have much more to do right now. I will stop here and I will put things where I say I'm going to put them and sort them into whatever it is they need to be sorted. And soon, I will have this all cleared off, except for what I absolutely need here, and I will get back to the 9090 and the 9060 hard drive. That is the plan. So, thanks for coming, thanks for watching. Um, Sid Bolton used to say it's not hoarding if you organize. Well, in a lot of places, and a lot of things, and a lot of stuff, I'm organized. Right here, not so much, but I will get organized. Thank you for being here.